71% of our respondents um, said that globalization was at least slightly uh, under threat. Um, are, are you seeing this? Does, does this worry you? Yeah, look, I, I was very surprised by that number. I thought that percentage was very high. Um, and obviously the, uh, the respondents were asked to comment at a particular point in time at, at, which, at which point perhaps uh, certain sensitivities were, were heightened. But um, I take great comfort from uh, the Chinese view. I think the Premier's position on globalisation is very clear and I think that's very exciting for us, particularly in this part of the world. Um, I take great um, comfort from the IMF's recent announcement that global growth is at 3.4% and, and is at the highest level since the GFC. Um, and then I throw in uh, the regulatory, potential regulatory rollback that I see coming out of the US and I am quite positive. I don't know. Very, very, very positive guy. Um, Matthias, you're, you're, you're here in Hong Kong. In terms of, sort of the, the globalisation side, is this, are we seeing regionalisation here in Hong Kong or is this sort of true globalisation? And maybe you can pick up on what Andy was saying about potential regulatory uh, rollback. Yeah, I, I think Hong Kong is probably the last place you see uh, a threat to globalization. I mean, if uh, it's it's a model of a of a global of a global place and a, a, a place to do business uh, from from globally. Um, where I see a, th I, I don't see a threat to globalization as such, but I but but certainly there need to be corrective, and, and that's again that's not from a Hong Kong perspective, but from a U.S. perspective, European perspective. We see the election election results a, 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 a complete. Uh, you know, a complete change of how 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 parties get elected, and you know, as we as we've seen in France, so there needs to be a corrective to to, to address the 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 you know the perceived losers of 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 of, of globalization, uh, because without that, um, and 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 with with that threat from the from the from the voting public. Uh, we have we have knee-jerk reactions such as uh, no to immigration, no to no no to EU, and so on. Yeah, no, ab absolutely. Wayne, we'll come to you. You've had a long long career in, in private banking, so de dealing dealing with high net worth individuals, family offices, and the like. How are they sort of feeling about globalization and some of the things that the, that are happening? Yeah, I mean, I think it's um, a little bit the flavor of the month, um, where uh, closed borders and inward looking. Um, populism um, is 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 uh, taking taking hold right now, but um, but I, I I take the view that um, technology uh, really kind of removes borders um, and the inefficiencies of markets and inefficiency and arbitrage, let's say, of information disappears with with the internet and with being able to virtually search and buy anything now uh, anywhere around the world at the best price. Um, so, so whilst you know borders may try to be closed, um, it's pretty impossible, I think, to prevent them from being open um, over the long run. So, I, I think this is a temporary phenomenon, and and it will disappear, um, or at least be upended by technology over the over the medium and long term. That's an excellent point. We're going to come back to technology, but I'm just before we move on from to, to that. Oh no, I'm just going to ask you. You, you sit in Luxembourg obviously sort of within the European mainland, where things have been probably a little bit different from how, how as, as, as Andy and Matthias have said, in terms of the global outlook and the trade center hub of, of, of Hong Kong, but you have a global remit. So how, how from where you sit in the European perspective, when you come to Asia, how, how's that sort of juxtaposition of sort of globalization and outward looking? Is there, is there, is there a, a difference there? It's always good to be here uh, and to, to leave Europe uh, for, for a couple of days <laughs> to start with. But um, what's happening in Europe is, is a lot of debate around elections, as uh, Matthijs is saying. It's, uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it's a lot of um, uh, Netherlands we had first where, where the ultra-right wing was on the winning hand, but luckily uh, they, they didn't win, and that's a personal view. Uh, France is now coming up. Uh, Germany is, uh, is in the running. Uh, we have Brexit, so there is a lot of threat, if you like, with, with Trump is being, again, as neutral, but also bringing in some, um, some changes to the landscape, um, where that is very much the topic of the day, where if you come to, to Asia, I have a feeling that it's less of a, an issue, less of a topic, uh, and I do relate what, what, what my colleague is saying, Wayne, is for, in terms of technology, that brings the world together. It's, it's just like in a, in a second or a millisecond, uh, uh, you know better, right? but that is, then, then it is, uh, we are connected. And I think that is what you see, if, especially for the global players, global investors, they want to have a global reach. 
And that's where we, I think, all with our firms and our back background is, uh, uh, are playing a role. Mm -hmm.